All right, so what we're looking at right now is a chart uh, that I just now created from uh, someone here in the Twitch live stream in the chat was asking some questions about VFI. It was Namanur, and uh, Namanur was talking about this VFI, wanted me to check it out. I started looking at it. It actually looks pretty good. I was getting more curious. I actually made this new chart template here called the Voluminizer, uh, Voluminizer and uh, kind of looking to see what volume uh, indicators can affect on price. Uh, one of the biggest things about volume indicators is you want to look for divergences. Uh, so that's very important when you're using any kind of an indicator that deals with uh, volume. So in looking at it, I've just entered in this this centerpiece with the green and yellow lines here is the VFI that he was talking about. It's on TradingView. You can take a look for it. Just search for VFI. It's the one by Lazy Bear. It's got thousands of likes. That's the one you want to check out in case you're curious about adding it to your chart. Uh, but looking at this, uh, we were trying to... He, he was saying that uh, the the way the signal works is that when the lines cross uh, from the uh, zero line is when you want to go long or short. So for instance here, uh, the green lines are crossing this zero line right here, and you would want to go long. But if you look at this chart here, you'll realize that the, the real place to go long, obviously everyone wants to catch the bottoms and the tops, is way down here. And if you waited for that signal to cross the zero line, you'd really only catch this little bit of a top. And so he was kind of saying that, yeah, I don't really like it because uh, by the time it crossed the zero, I kind of missed the mark. And you can see that again. Uh, here, here's on the downside. We cross over the zero point here. Uh, and you've kind of missed the majority of the movement down by the time it actually crosses the zero line. And then you catch this little bit of a leg down. Now, obviously, it went down further, but those are some pretty big swings. We're looking at a four-hour chart. But one of the things that I started playing with, and I had to redo everything so we could make this video so you can join in as well, maybe learn a thing or two about adding indicators to your chart, is when you find an indicator that looks interesting to you, one of the things you want to look at is try to understand what makes up that indicator. If you can find that indicator with a code, you want to look at that code and see what it's using. So as I'm looking at this, I'm like, yeah, you know, it looks good. One of the things about volume is the whole divergence thing. So for instance, like right here is a good example. We've got a really high peak on the VFI, and here is where the price is at. And so, you know, if we uh, then look, wait for this price to move, it went much higher. Um, Granted, these buy and sell signals that you're seeing here is a completely different indicator, but it helps bring out uh, noticeable differences in, in the price action. So you can see that it went much higher, and we're getting these peaks for sells. And if you look at the VFI, we actually have uh, a down, you know, compared to the price here and, and the and the uh, price later on up here. We've got the price increasing, we've got the volume decreasing, and now you're catching that divergence before the price line is actually going across that zero mark. So this is where I said, hey, by the way, you know, if you look for divergences, this will help you in your trading. Rather than waiting for it to cross a zero, just look for the divergence. So here's a really good example of the divergence. And if you notice that divergence, and obviously some other sort of indication to say that we're kind of topped out, these buy-sell tags are pretty much just based on RSI. So if you notice the RSI being uh, overbought, uh, and then you've caught some of this volume uh, divergence, it'd be easy for you to be able to see the signal and then start layering in some shorts. So really great. Here's the other thing, though. It kind of misses out on some other movements. So for from this top, it isn't as easily defined. I mean, you can find it, but it just seems a little strange that, you know, the movement between here, here, and here, it just seems kind of like just an up, right? So then what I started looking at is my advice to you when you add indicators is always look at the settings and see how you can tweak the settings. A lot of the defaults could be for maybe stocks. In this instance, we're looking at Bitcoin. Um, so depending on what you're trading, Forex and so forth, you may need to make those changes. So here are the default settings from when I added the indicator uh, from uh, Lazy Bear on uh, TradingView. Let me move this over just a little bit more. Let's see, what are we looking at? Let's look at this right here. Get rid of these trend lines. And we'll go back to editing these uh, these settings here. And what I started looking at was uh, the VFI length. And that looks to be something uh, pretty much like a look back period that we're analyzing. And it's really high. I noticed that it was 130. So I love uh, Fibonacci numbers. So the first thing I started looking at was the Fibonacci number sequence and trying to lower down uh, that setting. So from 130, I went to say 89. So if we go to 89, you'll see, whoa, it shifted a lot. Now, 
this peak, instead of being over here, is on the first uh, setup where we had first come up to that price level. So that's kind of good. Um, but then I kind of miss out with this M still. It still has this peak and then this valley, and it kind of just misses out on the M pattern. So then I went down a little bit more. The next Fibonacci number is 55. Now we're starting to get some, some differences. I notice here there was the peak there and a down and a peak. We're actually seeing that down and a peak. So that's kind of good, but we're, we're getting closer. This bottom isn't really the bottom here, and we're kind of missing out. We're, we wouldn't go long till we saw the divergence here, and we're missing out on that big move. So I don't. it's not really just there yet. So let me go down to the next Fibonacci number, 34. Now we're starting to get somewhere. Now we're starting to see some more detail in uh, the ups and the downs, and that's what we want. We want to be able to see the detail in the volume, the VFI, of all the peaks and the valleys. That way we can spot those divergences sooner. We don't have to wait for those big divergences. We can actually start looking at the minute divergences catching the big moves. Um, so right now, it's looking a little bit better. Uh, now, for this bottom, and this would be my test of tweaking, is I want to catch this bottom. If I can catch this bottom on a move of a four hour, now I know I've got it dialed in pretty well. I don't want to miss, uh, what is this, a, like a, this is a huge move. This is like a $2,000 move, a 23% move. I want to try to catch that move. Uh, let me make sure that saved my settings. Yep. So we've got that dialed in pretty well. So at this point, when we're coming down from the first top of the M, uh, here is our VFI. And if we look at the uh, price movement, it went down slightly but not as deep as the VFI. So that could have signaled some, some changes there. The, one of the other things I changed later on was, uh, I think this cutoff. And this, this all goes into playing with things. I noticed that the, in the description of the indicator, it said the coefficient 0.2 for, uh, I think it called it intra, or for day trading, and then 0.1 for intraday. And I kind of got confused because I consider day trading like you're, you're in and out within the same day. Uh, but I think he meant day trading like long term on the daily chart. So I just decided to change it to point one just to see just to see where we were at with point one. And it it seemed like it just changed this histogram a little bit, but I figured I'd go with the point one just to see how things worked. So we do that. And then the coefficient. I started playing around with these numbers here. Uh, I think I put it at one. Uh, let's see. I think the 2.5 is okay. One of the things that I was looking at uh, that signaled the 2.5 was okay was uh, the, the difference here. There's some big divergence here. This would have caught that big upside. Uh, after making this change with the VFI length, um, here's an example where you'd catch a big move because uh, we can see the clear divergence here at the bottom as opposed to waiting for it to be up here. I kind of like that here. Uh, the, si the signal length is the difference of this EMA across the green line. If we change this, to let's just say we double it, you'll notice that the, the crossovers on the green line are different. Now, I don't necessarily know if there's a, a trade signal there that you would look for, but I do notice if we let's lower it back down, and if we zoom into this spot right here, if we look for a crossover, it would be on this first candle here. If we make it bigger, double it. Crossover is the same there. Let's look at where the other crossover was. The other, if we kind of made this like a buy sell signal of the crossovers, uh, trying to get some sort of an easy uh, signal indication to go long, go short, uh, we would say that we would go long on that one. And if it crossed back over, it would probably be out right here. See what happens when we go back to the five. No real change on that one. But this is what I'm talking about tweaking. You want to tweak those indicators and get a much better um, zoomed in detail. Sometimes the <clears throat> these indicators are made for different kinds of uh, markets and stuff. So just a quick tip. Whenever you add indicators from TradingView, make sure you play around with those settings. See what works better for you. I think just adjusting this uh, this first initial setting, the VFI length, I think for what we're looking at, which is Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, I think I've tuned it in just enough to make it just that little bit better to be able to catch those those uh, actually big changes. These are $2,000 runs. 
uh, to catch them uh, before actually missing out and waiting for this zero crossover. So just a quick tip when you're messing with indicators. Uh, if you want to get more tips like this live and checking out these uh, buy and sell signals as they happen, uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, come check me out on uh, twitch.tv slash Bonavest, B-O-N-A-V-E-S-T. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.